Okay guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to change the evaporator and the condenser. So guys, uh, first I, will, I would like to show you what's happened, what is the problem. We have a single door refrigerator here. So uh, we realized that uh, when the client was removing ice from the fridge, uh, she made a hole on the evaporator here. So we could not be able to mend the, the leak there because of some reasons. So because of that we decided to change the evaporator. So I'm going to show you what uh, the evaporator that we have. So this one is a, is a is not a new evaporator that we have. So I'm going to replace that evaporator with this evaporator. And you can see guys that this evaporator is an inbuilt uh, capillary tube inside. So this one is the suction pipe and also the capillary inside it. Okay. So this is our evaporator. And as you can see here at the refrigerator, you can see that this refrigerator does not have the 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 common condenser that you know. This is the condenser that we have that we need to replace. It's also not a new condenser, but it will work just fine. So this is the evaporator that we have. So as you can see, guys, that here, uh, this is our compressor, and this is our charging valve. I'll put this one. I'm the one who put this charging valve there, and also. Uh, this is our suction line and this is our discharge line. So now you can see that the discharge line is going straight into the into the into the refrigerator through this pipe here. It's going at the back end of the condenser there. So okay, guys. Now uh, since you can see that for me to be able to connect that evaporator there into here, we have to make holes. We have to cut a big piece so that we can join the pipe. So instead, I just decided to say, okay, right now to make work easier and simple and smart, I'm just going to to change both the evaporator and the condenser. So this is the condenser that we have. This is condenser is the this uh, this this filter dryer right here. We're going to change this one with the new one. You know, guys, every time you change, every, you make any alterations or you you, you you refill your gas, you need to change. This filter dry is too it's cheap. Okay, guys. So now uh, we just need the regular tools, the gauges. So there are the gauges, the compressor, the pliers, uh, the filter dryer, and also the the refrigerant, which is R134A in this case, and our gas right there. The the house is not in order like the 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 instruments. So just show you guys. Uh, you can watch all my other videos to see. Uh, in detail what we need okay guys but i uh, have already talked about this uh, for a long time now so now i'll go ahead and make a hole here at the back just a simple hole so that our evaporator can get through there so right now i'll make a hole and remove the old one okay guys so now i just finished uh, putting the evaporator so i just made uh, another hole there if you can see i just made another hole over there and put it over the old pipe i just cut it okay so right now i have to show you the back you can see now this is the pipe that is the capillary inside the suction pipe so now i just have to bend it so that uh, it will be final after bending it i will solder it to to the compressor so right now i've bent the the suction pipe from the evaporator in the fridge so that uh, we have to remove that suction the old suction which is this pipe and replace it with this one so right now i'm going to desolder it using uh, my soldering gun and put this one instead of that one okay should i have it
So now, right now, I finished uh, soldering the suction pipe, and you can see now capillary is just hanging over this one right now. I have to join this pipe to the to the condenser pipe, which is this point in there. At this point, I'm going to put the capillary, the capillary, the sort of the filter dryer. So right now, I'm just going to put the filter. I've made holes, which is the first one is this one, the second one third and fourth which i'm going to put uh, the the condenser all right guys so right now i'm going to put the condenser so i have i got four screws these four screws oh a set of screws which i'm going to use to mount the, the condenser all right so i'll put the first one See that uh, our 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 suction pipe is inside here, so we we'll find the insulation to put on the suction later. Right now we don't have, so we we'll just go ahead and put it. Then when we we'll get it, we we'll just put it. Okay. So this is the second screw. So I just want to clear some misinformation or I just want to give you a warning. If you have a refrigerator uh, that is not cooling but the compressor is running fine, please, please switch off the compressor. Because the refrigerator, which is the gas, is supposed to cool the compressor. So if you run the compressor without, uh, if you see that it's not cooling, just switch it off. Because if you run it, you're going to damage the, your compressor and the compressor is too expensive. I think that's the most expensive component of a refrigerator. So you have to switch it off and find a technician. Or if you are interested in watching videos or if you are interested to do it yourself, find help or find information on what, what is the way forward. Because if you keep on running the refrigerator in such condition, uh, the winding inside the compressor are going to be bent because they will overheat. And after that, you don't have a, a compressor anymore. It will start to ground everything. Will go astray so please if your refrigerator is not cooling both the refrigerator if it's a double door or a single door just switch it off and find uh, someone who know about refrigeration so they can help you all right because if you keep on running the compressor in that condition you're going to damage your compressor for nothing so it will be double expense uh, technician plus compressor and everything. Alright, so right now I'm joining the the condenser, which is this one, to the discharge pipe of the compressor. So right now I use a piece of copper to join the two pipes. So right now I'm going to use flux with, uh, with copper soldering or iron so that uh, the eye the the road will stick there so now right now I'm going to store it
right now I'm done uh, joining this join. So right now I move on to uh, move to join the our filter dryer, which is this one. If you can see the filter dryer, it has two uh, ports. This one is connected to the capillary tube, and this one is connected to the discharge to the to the side of the condenser, which is this one in this case. So I have to join here the pipe to this section and th that section. So right now I have to make uh, to open a hole because this one I closed it so that uh, the breeze not get inside it. So right now I just bend this one uh, to such we can have a space to join the two like like this. Alright, so guys, uh, okay, this one I did not clean it, so I just take my my same paper and clean it like this, and I will use my pinches. I'll just I'll just use my pinches to hold here and just twist it like this to cut it because right now I don't have a, a capillary cutter, a, a a capillary cutter, yes. You can see if you look there, you can see a hole. It shows that also there we have a nice hole there. So right now I'm going to chain this one. Okay. Because this one is too wide than the pipe. So I'm going to just pinch it a little bit like this. So that I saw the not flow. Yes. Like this. So that it won't fall before we solder it. So right now I am going to this one okay. so right now I'm just going to bend it and make sure that you don't kink it you just bend it so that you can get in and you don't kink it so this one is at least yes like this so right now I go ahead and take my my gun and so that here we don't need a uh, flux, but you can use it if you want because we are just soldering copper to copper, copper to copper using a copper rod. So you don't need flux because this one is flux. So right now we're just going to switch on my gun and solder the joint. Okay, you can see now that our gauge is rising. 
ok you can't see anything because of the torch ok so right now is at 90 100 so just try to make sure that we don't you should put a pressure for at least uh, for at least 90 psi so right now is it 120 now is it uh, 130 so go ahead and switch it off yeah now it seems like we have a leak we have a leak here so this is the reason why we pressurize the system if you can hear there's a leak there so this one is aluminium so we have to get aluminium rod and make sure that we take care of that leak so right now i, I will take out the pressure from the system so that uh, we can solder that leak So now I go ahead and remove the paint, the paint that red, white paint, and so that I, would, I can take the the soldering gun and everything to solder the the, the leak. What I saw, I just finished the soldering. There, I don't know if you can see that I've just soldered. I use this uh, aluminium rod. It's called an aluminium rod. Okay. So right now, go ahead and open here. You can see that it's it exactly zero. So I'll go ahead and open it. The compressor is already running. Now the pressure is getting inside the compressor. Now it's at uh, 40 psi. Uh, Sixty. Yes, sixty psi. So if you put at least uh, ninety, it will be enough to check for any leaks. Yeah, now it's ninety. 200 so now I will stop here okay I have to switch it off okay so right now it's at uh, 246 so right now I'll take a, I'll get a sunlight. This is sunlight liquid. I've diluted sunlight liquid with water so that I, we can use it to leak test. So if there's any leak there, we'll see a bubble. We'll see. Yes, you can see that there's still a leak of on there. There's still a leak there. If you can see the bubbling there. So it shows that hey, there's still a leak. So we still have to take care of that leak. So go ahead and resold again. Okay, guys, so now the leak uh, we have made the leak. We no longer have a leak there. We no longer have a leak there. So, right now we are checking on other joints to see if we have any leaks there. So, on this one, we don't have any leak. So you the, if there's any leak, you see some bubbles. Not this one. You see, you just put it. You see, it will start to select. So you have to be careful. Because if there's any leak, soon enough, the client will call back to say uh, the fridge is no longer cold again. So you have to, to come back and, and put gas and leak what what again. So, you have to do excellent at first. So right now I don't see any leak. Except there is another one which you can see but my gauge also is telling me that uh, you don't have any leak. Okay. Alright so we are done with leak checking so right now we we'll go ahead and take the air out and do vacuuming then after vacuuming we go ahead and do uh, and we put the gas inside the fridge so right now everything is perfect so right now we're just going to take the air out like this we just open it like this and we just take it back like this
Okay, so go ahead and uh, do our vacuum. So now I'm removing the this was from here and putting here in the suction side instead of the gist I don't know that's the reason you put it so for the okay so right now you can see that our gauge is at zero so right now we just go ahead and switch on the compressor Okay, so you can see that our gauge is going down like that. You can see that it's going into the vacuum. Okay, so just run it for a couple of minutes and then we have a full vacuum. Okay, so just give it a time. So just put the video, then I'll continue. Then after this process, we'll go ahead and do the gas charging. So as we're waiting for it, let's just connect. So this is our gas. R134A. This is our refrigerant, our gas. So we just put this gas can adapter right here. So just put it here. Okay. Like that. We just screw it in. And we just then tight it. We don't use any tool to tight it. Now it's tight enough. Then after doing our vacuum, just connect it using the yellow hose right there. So right now we'll go ahead straight to put uh, our refrigerator inside the refrigerator so right now uh, before we switch on the compressor the compressor is off we have to connect we have to disconnect this yellow hose from our compressor right here and make sure every time before you disconnect here you have closed this pipe so that uh, we will not lose our vacuum so right now we will go ahead and connect uh, the, this yellow hose to the gas can adapter like this and you can see that our, our gauge is still in vacuum so right now everything is connected to the refrigerator so now i will go ahead and and rotate this uh, this gas can adapter clockwise yeah now it's open so now i uh, will have to 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 unscrew here so that uh the air put it into this pipe so now i have to patch out the air like this yeah now the air is out then I will, you can see that the our 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 gauge is still in vacuum. Now we have to open it. Yeah, now we have lost our vacuum. We are putting refrigerant inside the system. Okay, so right now is at uh, 40 psi. Yeah, we just close it like this. Oh, it's still at 40. So the I think that's too much. Okay, so we just uh, run our compressor. We just connect our compressor. Right now, I'm connecting the compressor. It's at 40. You see it decreasing like this. So, we are much interested with our running pressure. Other than, yeah, now it's running. You can see that it's going down. You can see that our hose is going down. It was at 40 here. And now it's going down, 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 down. Now it's, it's becoming slow, slow, slow. Yes, if you touch here. It's home. It shows that our compressor is in good health. Our compressor is running. Yeah, now it's at zero. So we open it like this. Then we just wait. So we we'll do it in episodes. We we'll give it time. We we'll open it. The wireless is running. So when much interested with the running pressure, the standing pressure. So now we are targeting at least 5 psi, we are targeting at least 5, like we are targeting at least 1, from 1 to 16 is fine, but as for this small refrigerator, I think uh, we will just see how it is performing, but I think uh, uh, from 0, 1, 2, 3 is fine, so we just open it. So this shows that we don't have any blockage, we don't have any restriction, everything is working perfectly fine. And now this one is getting cold. So right now I will move uh, to our refrigerator here. Yeah, now it's getting cold. It's just that I don't have a, a thermometer to show you what is going on here guys. 
it's working perfectly fine but it hasn't completed the cycle now so guys i did not tell you about something since we have changed the evaporator uh, we have this thermostat you see this wire right here is the wire that uh, that senses the temperature uh, and gives information to the thermostat so when it when you set your, te uh, your temperature regulator uh, it this one is the one that sends the temperature it has some gas inside it that sends so guys you have to make sure that you put it here below the evaporator there so now everything is working perfectly fine so right now we just have to monitor it for a couple of minutes and see what is going on so now we have to see our running pressure so our running pressure is 24 is 4 psi so just give it some time to run and we have also to fill it okay so guys thank you for watching this video thank you guys for supporting thank you guys for like please like share and also subscribe to this wonderful channel we're going to show you a lot of things guys refrigeration air conditioning uh satellite dish installation they are all coming up as soon as i get any job anything to do i will share it with you so today i was showing you guys basically how to change your evaporator so we have changed this system 100 percent we've changed the com the condenser we've changed also the evaporator so this is now a new system if you knew from where we came from now it's a new system so guys this one is working perfectly fine uh, thank you guys for subscribing please share please refer your friends and everything as for me guys i just learned to repair these things from youtube straight from youtube so youtube is great just learn just take your time did get your time if you are still learning or if you're interested in these things you get it now i can do it now i'm also a pro thank you guys